Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well today. Um, in today's video I'm going to talk about your equipment setup, setting up control presets and how to calibrate your flight sticks to improve accuracy. Now the first thing you want to do is set up a dedicated control profile. That way any changes you make will be saved on this scheme and you won't have to reset your controls every time there is a major patch that might wipe the game's default control directory. It's very easy to do. Uh, once you have your key binding set up the way you want, you just need to click the little save icon here, uh, which will allow you to export your key binding profile onto your computer. I just have mine saved in an external hard drive that I always keep plugged in. Uh, you will notice that I have a few profiles, one for mouse and keyboard, one for a flight stick, and one for an Xbox controller, which I use to control the free camera when recording cinematic videos, basically. Having these profiles saved outside the game directory means they will never be deleted by some random update and it will save you a lot of frustration later on. Now everybody has their own preference for setting up key bindings, however there are some optional key bindings that I recommend you set up for sim games. Number 1. Have different buttons for your flight stick for small and large calibre guns. This will help you conserve ammunition on certain aircraft that feature both machine guns and cannons, such as the early Spitfires for example. Uh, you don't want to be wasting your cannon ammunition if you're at a uh, still a bit of a distance where they're not really going to be easy to aim when you can simply pepper them with your more numerous machine gun rounds. Number two, set up a binding for drop bomb series. Now pressing and holding this button allows you to drop your entire bomb load without mashing the keyboard into a billion pieces. Um, this is especially useful for bombers that carry lots of smaller bombs, so things like, you know, the BV-238, for example. Number three, have a button for fire rockets, but not fire rocket salvo. This means you will fire your rockets per bank. So if your aircraft has rocket pods, you will only fire one rocket per pod, thus consuming ammunition when sniping bunkers. Number four. Make sure the button for your air brake is very easy to access. It's not just a tool for dive bombing and landing, it will be a vital tool for dogfighting in higher tier jet matches, a point I'll be covering in a later video. Number five, make sure that the button to bring up the tactical map is easy to get to. You'll be using this a lot. Number six, team radio messages are very important in simulated battles. They allow you to call for cover, alert your team members to enemy positions, and convey general responses without having to type. Make sure you're happy with the setup for these and memorize them. Okay, so let's talk about equipment setup and calibration. The most important thing is making sure that you have a comfortable ergonomic setup. You'll be spending a lot of time in simulator matches, so make sure that you take care of yourself. Get all of your gear at the right height and distance, because the worst thing is getting a cramp in your arm right when you're in the middle of a massive dogfight because you've not set up your flight stick in a good location. If you don't have a fancy, squishy computer chair, do your best to make your seat as comfy as possible. Cushions or even just a thick towel can help make the hardest of dining chairs a bit easier to bear. Now understanding your hardware can go a long way to helping you manage the overall stability of your aircraft. I've actually found that the cheaper, less expensive flight sticks tend to provide a more stable experience out of the box. Um, I used to fly an X-52 Hotas until it died, and since then I've simply been using a Logitech Extreme 3D Pro that I picked up for about 60 bucks. Now I'm not discounting the many benefits of owning a premium flight stick by any means, but some of them can be very, very twitchy out of the box and aren't always new player friendly. But that is just my personal opinion. The important thing is to know how your flight stick works. Many flight sticks have options for adjusting their physical settings. The biggest one is how tight or loose you want the tension spring of your stick to be. Now this is the coiled metal spring that allows your flight stick to remain upright unaided. This adjusts how stiff the stick feels when you move it across its axes. Sometimes if your spring is too tight, it can cause jagged movements if you're trying to make fine adjustments. It will feel almost as if the stick is catching on something. This can be fixed in two ways. You could lubricate the spring a little, or you could loosen it. Both have their merits and drawbacks, and it's really a matter of personal preference which way you want to go about it. Now it's also a good idea to make sure that your flight stick is calibrated correctly and to make sure that it has no bias. 
By that, I mean that the flight stick isn't giving the computer a false reading. Sometimes a stick can be slightly biased off an axis. For example, my stick, when not calibrated, gives an x-axis input of about 3%. So if I didn't have that calibrated out, it would mean that my in-flight x-axis would always be at positive 3%, and I would be fighting against that in-flight. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it makes a big difference when it comes to precise accuracy. Now once you're happy that your flight stick itself is calibrated and steady, it's time to look at its setup within the game. There are several factors that will affect how your aircraft responds to control inputs. A lot of you may find that you suffer from a wobbly aircraft, meaning that you are finding it impossible to make small adjustments to your aim without the crosshair flying all over the place. Hopefully this next section will help out with this issue. In the control menu, you want to go to the section titled Main Control Axis. If you double click on one of the control axes, say the roll for example, it will bring up a new menu. Now at the top here is a visual representation of your joystick's axis position. Right now my hand is off the stick, so it's sitting in the middle of the bar. However, when I move my stick as if to make the aircraft roll to the left, you will see the markers move. You will note that there are two markers here. There is the physical axis and there is the logical axis. The physical axis is the amount of movement your computer detects on the joystick. The logical axis is the amount of movement that is translated in the game to your aircraft. You will notice that the in-game movement is a bit different from the actual movement exerted by myself on the flight stick, and that is because of non-linearity. Ideally, all controllers should be linear across their axis range, meaning from the neutral position to full deflection there should be a regular, even level of input from the controller to the game. It is then up to the user to set a non-linear curve along the axis if they want to change that level of output. Uh, now the benefit of non-linearity can be improved aiming. Sensitivity will be reduced around the center of the controller, making fine adjustments easier. Moving further along the axis, the output will increase, as will movement of the control surfaces itself. Some pilots prefer to have their controls completely linear, so basically set to 1. Others prefer the reduced sensitivity around the center of the controller. It's really down to personal preference and should be set accordingly with lots of testing. Um, usually a setting of between 1 to 2.5 seems to work well on pitch, roll and your axis for most pilots. You can see the effect of your set nonlinearity by moving your controller and observing the logical axis compared to the physical axis at the top of the settings screen here. With a nonlinear curve set, the logical axis will move slower at the center than the physical axis, but it will catch up with your physical axis as it moves further towards full deflection, depending on how much nonlinearity you have set. Now, the next thing you want to look at is setting up your dead zone. Now, the dead zone is a small set radius around the center of your controller axis where user input is ignored. Depending on how sensitive your controller is, holding it in a neutral, centered position can sometimes return movement to your aircraft where you normally wouldn't want any. Remember how I was talking about input bias earlier in the video? It's very similar to that. Having a user-adjusted dead zone can prevent this unwanted movement in the neutral position. Now some devices already have a dead zone, some not at all, so it's a good idea to check for this. I have a dead zone set up of about 0.02. Doesn't sound like a lot, but if I just wiggle my controller a tiny bit, I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm actually wiggling my controller here and it's not actually moving anything. When I put a bit more force it does, but it basically means that when my hand is just resting on the flight stick, it isn't causing too much movement, so it can really help improve level flight accuracy um, and also tracking accuracy. So if you're in a long banking curve, only the large inputs of your hand are going to be reflected in the game. So if you've got a bit of a twitchy hand from having too much coffee, um, that can help as well. Now, the multiplier setting controls how much your flight stick movement is registered in the game. A setting of 1 will result in a 1 to 1 movement, meaning the amount you move your stick is equally registered by the game. If you set your multiplier lower, say uh, 0 0.80, your input will be reduced by 20%. The opposite is true if you increase your multiplier to 1.2. 
You can see the effect of your multiplier setting by moving your controller and observing the logical axis compared to the physical axis at the top of the axis setting screen. With a multiplier less than 1, you will see that you do not get the full deflection as the logical axis does not reach the end of the bar when the physical axis is at full deflection. Uh, with a setting greater than 1, your effective physical axis range is reduced and your logical axis will reach the end of the bar before your physical axis does, meaning your output is literally multiplied. Uh, the correction setting is to be used on an axis that is off-center and needs correcting. Most controllers these days also calibrate, but for those that don't and need correcting, this is the setting that will fix an off-center stick or controller, so bear that in mind. Moving back to the main control screen, you will also see three sliders to adjust the sensitivity of your roll, pitch, and yaw. Put simply, this is the response time between the physical input and how quickly the pilot flight stick and control surfaces react in game. At 100% setting, your on-screen flight stick is synchronized to your own controller's input, movement, and speed. If sensitivity is set to anything less than 100%, the in-game flight stick response will lessen and the speed in which it moves will become slower. Set sensitivity to the lowest value and your on-screen movement and control surfaces will be very slow and lag behind your own controller's movement. Um, the pilot's controls will also return to their neutral position slowly when the controller is let go, uh, set to 100% and it is back to being synchronized, matching the speed of movement of your controller's input and recentering quickly. Um, again, this is a big personal preference in the, how you do this. I have mine set a bit less to about 80%, just because I find the slight delay in reaction in the game feels a bit more natural and it's definitely helping with my stability overall you might want to experiment with it um, i find most people i speak to prefer to have a setting between about 55 to 95. now all of these control settings will have a big impact on how your aircraft responds to control input so it may take some time tweaking everything to your liking but eventually you should find a setup that suits your style of flying and hopefully it helps improve your accuracy and your overall enjoyment of the sim experience because nothing is more frustrating than struggling with your controls when you think you should actually be a lot better. So I hope you guys found this video informative. Uh, I apologize as well for not posting this sooner. I was very busy um, over November and December, December with work, uh, Christmas, family commitments. It's just, yeah, I just didn't have time to get around to doing this. So I apologize again, but here is the video as promised. The next one, we're gonna be looking at um, flight and combat basics. So, you know, beginning to talk about maneuvers, how to engage and disengage from combat, depending on the aircraft. So stay tuned for that. Um, until next time, everyone, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a lovely day.